now back to Inside West Virginia Politics with Mark Curtis. And welcome back to Inside West Virginia Politics. We're continuing our discussion about the scandal at the West Virginia State Supreme Court. Joining us uh, live from our uh, studios in uh, Channel 7 WTRF in Wheeling is Delegate Sean Fluharty, a Democrat from Ohio County. Sean, good to see you. Congratulations on your election win, by the way. Thank you, Mark. Thanks for having me. Your thoughts on Alan Lawfrey uh, basically resigning at the 11th hour before he was scheduled to face impeachment in the House and a trial in the Senate? Yeah, you're right. The 11th hour. How convenient is that? Post-election, we get the resignation. Uh, and, you know, I think people are happy that this circus is almost over, but I know I'm not happy and I know that my constituents are not happy that we're going to have another appointment by Jim Justice in some backroom deal for the Supreme Court. And like I said, we wanted from day one the voters to have their say in this. They elected Alan Lawfrey as a Republican, and now they're not going to have the opportunity to see who comes in next following his resignation. So I think if Jim Justice wants to show real leadership, he, he should come in right away and say, we need to have a special election for who takes over after Alan Lawfrey's resignation. Or do you think he should just appoint Joanna uh, Tabata, a circuit judge here in Kanawha County? I believe she was the third highest vote getter of the 20 candidates for the Supreme Court seats. Might that do something to, uh, to smooth this over? Well, she should certainly be on the short list, but I have not heard anything uh, along those lines that that would take place. I fully expect Jim Justice to get in a back room with his political appointments and make another appointment like we saw with Evan Jenkins and Tim Armstead. Two politicians were appointed previously, so the track record we have to go off of when it comes to Jim Justice and his appointments are friends of his who are politicians first and judges second, or in their cases, never been judges previously. All right, well, let's talk about that. In fairness to Governor Justice, because he's not here to defend himself, yes, he appointed Armstead and Jenkins, but then they had a, they were only on a few weeks. They had to go before the voters, and the voters of this state simply chose to keep them on the bench. Doesn't that settle the issue you bring up? Yes, they had a built-in advantage. Well, I, wasn't I know happy that. the way the election. I wasn't happy the way that that election was run because Mark, did you see the commercial that was running on that about harsher penalties? And they were running as a duo, and it was funded by the Republican Party. We're supposed to have nonpartisan elections to the Supreme Court, and it was very partisan. They ran as a team, and they ran an ad that was blatantly false. You can't bring harsher penalties from the West Virginia Supreme Court. That's not how it works. It was a blatant lie, and the people of West Virginia were told this misrepresentation and used that in the voting booth. So I wasn't happy with how that played out at all. And I believe that ad should have been denounced from day one and never should have been on television. But you didn't hear anybody uh, from, from leadership saying that should take place, and I wonder why. Well, in fairness, I didn't hear anybody from the Democratic leadership try to stop it either. Some of these other candidates, and look, there were 10 in both races. Uh, some of them bought ads, you know, touting their, their backgrounds too, including Judge Tabbitt, who I mentioned. And ultimately, the people got to decide. But I guess we'll, we're going to disagree on this point. <laughs> Well, that was a third party ad, so it should have been denounced from day one and shouldn't have hit the airwaves. But unfortunately, we've turned our Supreme Court into an entire circus where partisan politics are playing a bigger role than actually putting the policy first and people first and the qualifications of judges, which should be separate from politics. But unfortunately, we've reached that realm in West Virginia where everything's political and everything is bought and sold at this point, including Supreme Court seats. All right, well, let's talk about other issues here. You were reelected. Uh, I don't know how many terms you have served, but you're, you're going back in January. What are going to be your big priorities? And uh, I know a lot of people look to you for leadership on the medical marijuana issue. Can that be fixed come January? Well, that should be a top priority come January. It's unfortunate that it hasn't been thus far. You know, I was reminded we just celebrated Veterans Day in West Virginia. And if there's any group who needs this to take place and have a good functioning medical cannabis program, it's our veterans. And it's a shame that we haven't made it a top priority. It needs to be a priority in January because we're behind the eight ball now. I don't believe we're going to be up and running in July of 2019 as we wanted to be at this point. And we've had a lot of people stopping the progression of this legislation, including Governor Justice. So I think it's a priority for him to come in and say on day one during the state of the state that we will fix this program and we'll get it up and running so that we can protect our citizens who are sick and our veterans. There's no reason why using cannabis for a health issue should make you a criminal. Our cancer patients and veterans deserve better in West Virginia, and it needs to be a top priority going forward. Yeah, I have a feeling it's going to be high on the agenda come January in the uh, Capitol when the session begins. We want to thank Delegate Sean Fluharty, Democrat, Ohio County, and a member of the Judiciary Committee for being with us this week on Inside West Virginia Politics. We'll see you back at the Capitol real soon, Sean. 
See you in January, Mark. Thank you very much. All right, we'll have our final segment after this break. Don't go away.